Should we do it? Should we start talking about the extended cut? Yeah, I guess. How long have we been going for two hours already? And now we're going to talk about the extended cut. Um, so we know your feelings. Everybody knows your feelings uh, about Jurassic World Dominion. Not a fan. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I could say you're not a fan of the movie. Right, that's putting it lightly. Not a big fan of of Jurassic World Dominion, um, yeah. which, like, again, I reiterate that, like, I have a very hard time understanding why no one, why people would not be a fan of this movie because uh -huh. I loved, like, I loved everything. I see like very small flaws that I'm like, eh, whatever. But like, I just don't understand it. Um, so, the extended cut comes out and. Uh, do you do you want to preface the extended cut by saying anything about how you watched it or anything? I know you were saying you had a, a difficult time or something trying to trying Look, to watch this. <laughs> I have it here in my notes. How the f am I supposed to watch this digitally? And then I says my least Why? favorite part. My least favorite part of the extended edition is the one hour it took to link all my accounts to my Xbox. Remember and change all my passwords. You can only okay. The, I bought the disc. Okay, I bought the disc, and okay. my wife, she got into a new game. the The four K player is on her television. She got into a new game. I didn't want to be like, "Hey, I have to do this thing for the podcast." Because to be honest with you, she's not like a crazy huge fan of the fact that I spend four hours a month talking about Jurassic Park in general. <laughs> so like. I sure as heck wasn't going to kick her off her television. So well, like, now it's right, only well, four hours every two months, you know? Well, I know. <laughs> but anyway, she's just, she's like, I don't want to watch it. Like, whatever. So anyway, I didn't want to kick her off her TV. So I'm like, all right, I got the dig digital code. Surely my PlayStation 5 will watch this movie. No. PlayStation 5 will only recognize it. In the Apple TV app on PS5, it only recognizes the the regular edition because to for the code in america you redeem the code either voodoo or movies anywhere movies anywhere disperses to all your digital your other digital accounts so i redeem it in movies anywhere movies anywhere says this is two SKUs: a movie and an extended movie great i do that i sign into movies anywhere i can pick which movie i want to watch i got like two posters in yeah. movies anywhere I sign into the Apple TV app. I got one poster, and it's the got two two posters right there for movies anywhere. Right. So, so I sign into the Apple TV app on PlayStation. One poster. It's the regular movie. So I'm googling. Oh, the extended edition is an iTunes extra. Okay, no problem. I understand that makes sense to me. iTunes extras are not available on the on the Apple TV apps on streaming devices that aren't Apple TVs. So it's just, I'm like banging my head again. And so like eventually I, over time, I, I figured it out. understand how, something. Yeah. You, you were, you were checking on your PS5. No? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, why did you not put the disc in? Cause I have a, I have a discless PS5. Like oh, a sane okay. person <laughs> would purchase. I don't. I have the disc version of the PS5 that is because the I, I machine. want. Yes, it is very ugly and it is huge and it spews out heat. But yeah, um, it's uh, my wife. I don't, I don't have a PS5 4K, with. I don't have a 4K has the player. PS5 with the disc. Okay, all right. That makes a little bit. I'm like, what is going on? He mentioned the PS5. Um, okay, so that <laughs> so, makes sense. Um, so then, I, yeah, then I, I don't. I don't. It's like. <sighs> I drop down to my Xbox Series S and it's like, oh, this works with Movies Anywhere. And I'm like, great, where's all my purchases? They're not there. So I got to like go into Movies Anywhere. It's like, oh, what's your Xbox? I got to remember my password, change my password, relog in. Took an hour, dude. The extended oh edition gosh. is not two hours and 40 minutes. It's three hours and 40 <laughs> minutes. All right. Well, I, um, it's so crazy to me that it would be so difficult. Um, I mean, do you? Could you not have like streamed to your TV from your phone or anything like that, like real quick? <laughs> I know the quality maybe wouldn't be the same or whatever, but like, here's the thing, man. It's like I'm not watching this movie very many times, so like I wanted to watch it as best as I could. Sure, um, yeah, sure. 
But yeah. All right. So that's but, that's that's a pain. That's a pain in the butt. Uh, but I'm like, but also like I yeah, I know it's on Peacock right now, but like I guess you don't you didn't have that app or is it not available? Well, I or did, something but like I, that, I didn't but like, spend five bucks. I had the stupid code. Oh, uh, okay. Like, so you, I I for some reason we have like Peacock. I don't know why. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um th- some things I found interesting. The extended edition is rated R. What it is? <laughs> yeah. The extended edition is, it is rated for, R for the beheading. I guess <laughs> maybe. Um, oh, my, this says NR, so, so not rated. Oh, Microsoft says R, so. Oh, really? Whatever. So, oh, yeah. so movies anywhere says NR, I guess. So that okay. means not rated, I guess. Maybe. Hmm. After all that, Brad. Okay. After all that, you had two hours and however long it is. This movie has a lot of problems. Okay. Well, let me tell you something, Brad. Let me break let's, it to you. Let me look. Breaking news. Okay. I liked this movie. <gasps> what? Are you kidding me? I enjo- I enjoyed this movie. I'm so happy. Two hours and forty <laughs> minutes. Now, look, the problems I have with it all exist. All right, uh-huh. they're still okay. all there. Okay. But going into it, knowing how much I hated it, I think kind of helped. Like it helped. Uh huh. Yeah, of course. I, I like definitely feel like curb, that helps. Yeah. Curb the blow, like weaken the blow of like how much I didn't like it. I still think Laura Dern's acting is atrocious. I still think it Alan goes back Grant and forth. is. Yeah, it, it does. I still think changing the Parasaurolophus is. <laughs> I mean, can we say war crime? Like, is that, is it. Is that no, I, I'm it? not sure we can say that personally, but like. Look, I can't I can't sympathize either. I don't I... <laughs> They put a line, they put a line in the movie that says we now can make dinosaurs that are perfect in to what they look like. Yet the new Blart Parasaurolophus needed to change. Put the new Parasaurolophus in the sanctuary. Okay. I mean, not, there's no explanation for that. Okay. You know, it's it's the, certainly a in, like it's just I mean, a questionable look, thing for me. I'm like, what what is that? <laughs> It still has all the same problems, but uh-huh. I enjoyed it more. I I'm half tempted to be like it's not the worst one anymore. Okay, half tempted. Um, Man, but again, like it's me- like I enjoyed I enjoyed like DeWanda Wise. I enjoyed Omar Sy. Like I enjoyed. Uh, I thought the introduction of Alan and Ellie was way better in this version than it was in the original. I I was almost upset that I had mm-hmm. seen the prologue before because yep yep i'm like absolutely my feeling about the prologue being there i was like yeah this belongs here but i can see why they cut it out like i can totally see why it was completely axed because Mm -hmm. we've all seen it it was unnecessary to the story really um but yeah yeah i mean i enjoyed it more man like i'm not gonna lie like i might watch this a few more times in my life uh Man, I'm happy. I and I hope it only gets better for you. You know, it, I, I again, yeah, I was I watching so. it I last mean... night. Uh, yeah, I was watching it last night or yesterday or whatever, and I was like thinking about the fact that like, you know, you, um, a lifelong Jurassic fan. I, I obviously know you're a big fan of the original characters and stuff like that. And I'm watching it and I'm just like, "Man, how 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 does anybody not feel like so happy just to see these people?" Like just to see them, I'm I, the entire time I'm thinking, all right, uh, Ellie is you know Laura Dern's not uh, not fully on top of things with the acting there, but but like I said, like then like later on I'm like oh well th- that scene's actually pretty acted pretty well, and I'm like ah that's not that uh, okay this is so it's like a little back and forth with that character yeah, and there's there's one like one criticism I have which was is just common in both versions, is that. There's a lot of reactions where the characters just go, what? 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 And it's like multiple characters all just react to things as if they just say, what? And I'm like, that's like for me, one thing I'm like, okay, what? what, The the script is weird or the acting is, I don't know what it is. Some of them I find funny, but then it gets to the point where I'm like, okay, now we're just doing it too much. Um, For me, it was kind of, it reminds me of like uh, Drax in like, Drax in in Guardians One, I was like, oh, this guy is hilarious. I love Drax. Guardians Two, I was like, okay, now you're doing it too much. Like, yeah. you know. Uh, but um, 
but yeah, I, I'm glad you like it a little bit more. And I mean, uh, look, it still know. has logic. It still has logic issues, like the fact that Trevorrow's pteranodons are a hundred percent accurate to prehistoric pteranodons. Like for a movie, that, for a movie that goes out of its way to say Jurassic Park and Jurassic World never had a hundred percent accurate animals. They did nothing to make the pteranodons look slightly different or the Nasutoceratops look slightly different in the uh the pre the not the prequel, but the post yeah. pre movie, right? Yeah. Um Quetzalcoatlus is making nests in the city, and this is not a problem. Dude, this is a huge problem. This is a this is a flying dinosaur the size of a plane. Like, this isn't a compy running around, you know. Mm-hmm. At a farm. Well, maybe, I are... mean, they, ne- they never talk about whether it's a problem or not. So maybe it is. I, <laughs> I don't See, know. I feel like there's a there's a lot of like a lot of stuff that's not shown and a lot of stuff that's not talked about. So we like we have we have nothing to infer. And I feel like maybe you're looking into it in certain ways that may, I'm just not like, and I don't care. I mean, but, like, maybe, um, but like there are things. There are things. Okay, we how do we round up the dinosaurs? We can't possibly figure this out. We can't possibly figure out how to round up all the dinosaurs. It doesn't. It's not possible. And mm-hmm. then Maisie's like, "Oh, wave a flare in front of that one. It will follow you." And so I'm like, "Oh, this the 15 year old knows how to round up the dinosaurs. It's just fire, like just well, yeah, you want, I, like I, like Owen's like out that. there trying to lasso one Parasaurolophus." He could have just lit a flare, and the whole herd would have followed him to the thing. I don't know. Like, yeah, there's maybe, broken, maybe. There's I don't know if it works. Don't work I don't know if it works for everything. Yeah, but like, it, it did all of a sudden work for the apatosaur, right? But I, I did appreciate that. Like Maisie is is somebody who like, oh, why does this kid like that's just traveling through here know something about how to do this like this i I like that you know there's a little bit extra context there for this character um one thing i like about that scene specifically is in the um regular version the theatrical cut that scene Mm -hmm. makes no sense to me like it's just like and while watching it the first time i'm like she just rides her bike somewhere and then just turns around and there's no like she doesn't go anywhere but this like this version this extended cut fills in things that like i thought were like slightly weird or you know didn't make a ton of sense yeah. to me but like i just i'm I'm fine with it and it, it actually extends those things and makes them much more full so now she like actually goes somewhere she actually stops at a place and then turns around and it makes sense and there's like a little bit of context to like maybe why she she went away you know why she drove off because like blue is out there yeah. she maybe hears blue or something so and there's little things like that. Like you had said, El- Alan and Ellie, like um, really cool to see a little bit more context there. Um, I actually, what I did when I was watching was I had, um, making it more complicated here, I had uh, my Blu-ray playing on the PS5. I've got my, my PlayStation controller in my hand. And then I also had Movies Anywhere playing the theatrical cut. So I had the extended cut on the TV, theatrical cut in my hand. And I sync them up, you know, and then I would press play and, and watch and then see what happened. And any time there was a deviation, I made a note mm-hmm. of it and I, I wrote it down. So I was like actually like doing is, that the entire this way. This is great because I have three things that I pointed out in my notes that I liked uh, uh-huh. about this. And I'm unsure if I missed them the first time or if these are new things that. Uh, okay. Okay, I can so, probably, so let me hopefully. let me say my three things, and then I actually want to go through with you because I'm not quite sure what was new fully. So <laughs> I think it's cool you have this note. So the first thing I liked the I I liked the added Delacorte scene uh, where Owen has captured the Paris mm-hmm. office and is walking it through the woods, and that's where you get your first introduction. Right? This is new, correct? Yes. Uh huh. Absolutely. Okay. I liked it's, it. It's, I thought it was it's great. Cool. It, it's great because like previously you just saw them like up on a ridge and they were just up there just eyeing them up and then that was the end right. of the scene and now you actually get the interaction you get a little bit more about like like selling the bones and stuff like that and and the right. The, right. the actual like uh you know terror that might come with people threatening you uh out in the wild mm-hmm. like to take these dinosaurs and then like it actually like explains because i know a lot of people were like what was he doing where did he take it like where did it go 
Because there's no explanation in the theatrical cut. Not that it matters. It doesn't really matter. I just, in my mind, he just took it to a farm and then it went off to DFW. But now we right. know that that's not the case. And I, I actually like that. It was pretty, I like, pretty nice scene. I, I was never thinking that dinosaur bone powder, I mean, I know that animal bone powder is a thing, but I'm not thinking like this would be something that people would be after. I like that he was able to be like, look, this animal, you know, X amount of money per pound. What is this? It's like worth half a million to you. Like I, I like that context for, for someone who was like, I didn't get enough of dinosaurs in our world. This was a scene that definitely should have stayed in this movie. Um, sure. I liked, I know this was new. I know this was new because <laughs> I hated these girls right when I saw them. I uh, said, I love that Alan Grant still has every reason in the world to hate kids. And <laughs> those girls, T-Rexes have been around since like the nineties. He's such an old man. I did think the delivery was weird. He explains why they studied dinosaur bones before they asked the question, why are we studying dinosaur bones? Thought that was weird, but regardless, I liked yeah. it. I mean, it's like they just like interrupt him looking at Instagram and they're just like, why are we doing this? They've they've been like alive and here since like the 90s. Like, what are you doing digging up bones? Like, what who right. cares? You know, like very like the fact that they did not listen to him talk, you know, prior to that. They didn't hear yeah. him <laughs> say why I'm doing this. And uh, and they're like, didn't the T-Rex have like a tiny brain or whatever? Who cares? You know, that's. I don't know. They found that funny though for some reason. So, um, but yeah, it's what a nice we... little because like it just cuts off and it feels like too short, and it gave it a little bit more context to it. So that was nice. I've been wanting a while for Maisie to have uh, genetic memories of her being. This is something. I mean, I know it's a far fetched yeah. idea, but this I was is going to say I that wanted. with the flare thing. I was. I actually was going to bring something up like that. <laughs> I thought it was weird that like he goes out of his way to say the T-Rex was capable of memories. And then you have in this extended cut, you have this narrative of the T-Rex is killed. The original Rex is killed by the Giganotosaurus. You are led to assume that this is now the mosquito that gave us that Rex blood. And then you have the, your final battle, which we know is coming because of, of the theatrical cut. Mm -hmm. We have this battle of the, quote, cloned T-Rex battling a Giganotosaurus. And I kind of was like, the, the, the groundwork for genetic memories is there. I would like to have seen those. All we got was Maisie standing in front of um, yeah. the gates in a photo. I mean, that would have added a whole nother, what, 15 minutes it to kinda, the movie? Like, yeah, it reminds me of how cool, like, in JP3, when, when you know, Alan sang to the bird, like, you remember me, you say my name, Alan, is it Alan? And then by the end of the movie, like, you've already had a raptor say Alan, you've gotten Grant communicating with Velociraptors. So, like, that, there's a great payoff there with that kind of, you know, behind the curtain, like, cool, like, you know, stuff that you're dealing with. But then here, yeah, you're right, it's just, like... It doesn't exist like but i don't know how would you put that across like the t-rex maybe has some instinctual memory or something but like and i yeah i kind of thought about with the flare with Maisie. i'm like yo maybe she just like remembers things or something but like that's not the case because she's not some weird scientific thing you know like she's just like a, a normal kid that's kind of been experimented on or whatever yeah how does she know about the flare that's weird yeah, I don't um, know. I mean, I guess she she just spent a lot of time studying dinosaurs in the in the mansion or whatever. So, I I still think Malta is by far the coolest part of this movie. Um, I oh enjoyed God, yeah. the. I mean, not that it added to the story, which again, this there was nothing. There is nothing added to this movie. I still stand by this. I don't think that it's like the, what they added that makes me like it more. I think it's just that I was able to like step away, deal with mm. my anger over the course of three months, <laughs> and then like come back to it. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I enjoyed the over raptor versus whatever dinosaur that was. Lysosaurus. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, Lysosaurus. The puppetry on the Lysosaurus, again, like not Which, a fan. I gotta point this out real quick. Um so I don't I don't know if I don't think I'm gonna be releasing the video in time, but here's a little spoiler if I can find it. Um I I received oh, oh no wait, it's actually in, in my desk. I received a little shipment from Toy Monster. And it came with a Lysrosaurus. And I was putting it together. Um, here it is. Here's the Lysrosaurus right here. Here's the, the full thing. 
was putting it together and I was having a hard time getting the head to stick on. And lo and mm -hmm. behold, the one dinosaur that got beheaded was the Lysosaurus. <laughs> the head broke no. off from the body. And I'm like, wow, that is very poetic. The one dinosaur to get beheaded that is the that one. Did, that didn't get beheaded. It, I know. It's the one that did the beheading. So it's very poetic oh, that this one yes, I, is now beheaded. So the, we don't have an Oviraptor. So uh, this is the only one. And I was like, wow, of all the ones for the head to fall off, it had to be the Lysosaurus. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Toy Monster. I thought multiple was great. Yeah. Did, they add, did they add shots of dinosaurs eating people, especially like the Allosaurus? Like those were um, all new? No, the, I think that was already that was already there. The Allosaurus eating somebody, but what was different was I think th I don't know if it was like the guy on fire more or something like that. But there, oh no, no, the the Allosaurus takes a guy and throws it over to the Carnotaurus, and then yeah. then it, most of the rest is the same. But I was like, okay, there's a little bit of a difference there. Of extras um, up there. Um, now this line, I don't know if it was in the original. Uh, Ellie is talking to Alan. He's like, I don't, I don't want to be involved. I'm done with all this. Like I'm, I'm over it. I've been trying for years. And she says, uh, rest is a luxury that not even Alan Grant can have or afford or something like that. I like that line where she's like, you basically, it's like, you have a responsibility to hmm. we're, we're heading towards collapse sure. and you have information. Um, whether that was in the original or not, I don't sure. know. I well, liked it this there... time around. Yeah, I don't know uh, specific lines totally, but there was an extended part where it was funny because like Alan turns around in the in the tent and he's like, "How are your kids doing?" or whatever, and and then that part he turns around and says a completely different comment about growing algae in his article that Ellie wrote, and I was like, "Whoa, what what happened here?" and talked about like that they were on the verge of extinction and stuff. So, you know, and then Grant kind of just is like daydreaming. He's like, "I just like listening to you." So. There was, a, so there was a lot of really cool stuff in That's there. That's a creepy thing to say to a woman. Like, so... Well, I mean, he's just like, he's reminiscing, and I feel like he's just like, ah, oh, I missed this. No, you know, no, like, no. I, Brad, you, know. you would say this maybe to your wife that you see on a daily basis. I don't think you would say this to a woman you haven't seen in, like, 15 years. Um, <laughs> I mean, who knows, but, yeah. They, I mean, they, they had a thing. Like, they had a thing. Still, still, I have the same issues where it's like the, the Ceratopsian farmers have figured out how to control their dinosaur population it's claire that goes in and causes the chaos so in that moment claire is kind of the bad guy like there aren't problems until our heroes get involved like i still have issues with that uh, what what are you talking about at the beginning of the movie yeah claire goes into like a a nasutoceratops or a ceratopsian farm there's a bunch of different ceratopsians there mm -hmm. this is a facility that has dinosaurs under control. Granted, they're not doing nice things, but <laughs> chaos doesn't ensue until our hero goes in. Yeah. And yeah. Because, because, because they're doing unethical things. So she's trying to interrupt the process. Yeah. But these guys haven't figured out like this isn't. Yeah, but they're the, the, the owners of these now pseudoceratops are the bad guys. So she's trying to break them free or at least study what they're doing there. And they didn't intend to do what they did, but they did it anyway, right? Like they, they didn't go there to break it out, but I'm okay with that. I'm like, you know what? Break them free, whatever. Like these, these are doing bad. They're doing shady things over here. Who knows? I don't know where they were going or what they were doing with them, but yeah. And I, and I still think the biggest sin of the entire movie is solving uh, the extinction level event. I yeah, cannot I, believe I, that they, I cannot believe one that they solved it, that, that Wu did not have to pay for his crimes basically against humanity all these years. And the way they do everything with the news anchor, she doesn't even sound like a news anchor and explaining things to the audience through the news is like the laziest form it's so lazy. Yeah. Like, well, I I guarantee you, if you go back and listen to some episodes somewhere and we talk about, oh, how are they going to start this movie? 
I th- I think we would have probably brought up uh well the you know the last movie they had the T Rex scene and then they did a news segment so they're not going to do that again right like they're that's not that's off the table right. they're not going to do another news segment to set everything up because and then we they didn't do. like the news segment in Fallen Kingdom either it was bad <laughs> I mean I'm fine with that I'm fine with both to be honest but like I I just feel like I'm surprised that they did it again and then you're right they close out the movie I was paying attention to that a little bit more this time and I'm like this is this is strange like there's just there's no there is no news segment happening. It's just an overview of like a news segment that I guess is happening at some point in time. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I don't think there's maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think there's like a now this whatever because just that's just like some I don't know some like I feel like it's something you see on the internet all the time now this or whatever it is. I think movies have done it really well. There's been movies that do recaps pretty good. Um, I think, for instance, I think Spider-Man, which really takes it from the Superman movies, um, opening credits in through images or through video or whatever, they're they're showing you what happened in the last movie, right? Like Spider-Man 2 opens with, Mm -hmm. you're not only flying through the webs, but each web is a frame for explaining the last movie. And then Spider-Man 3 does the same thing where it's explaining the last movie so that you as a new viewer come in and you understand where the story's at, where it's like, yeah, yeah. that's a creative way of doing it. Telling, just telling you through news is like, it's like the laziest thing that you like, you know, you know, which way I don't like so is, is the mission impossible way where they actually show you shots from the entirety of the movie. And I'm like, I don't no, Stop showing me this stuff. I don't want to see <laughs> this yet. It hasn't happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, it, yeah uh, it, it's a strange it, it's a strange choice, and I de- I definitely called out to it, you know, on my own. I was like, ah, oh, this ending, like, I wonder why this is happening this way. Personally, for Doctor Wu, I'm um, I'm actually, oh, I, like, I, I was surprisingly okay with his redemption in a way. I was like, I definitely was the guy who said like he needs to die. This is it. This is his end. It's the only way you you do this. Um, and he dies in a redemptive way where he helps people out or something, and he just dies or whatever. Um, but I was, I was, Again, I was surprised that they didn't, but I, I was okay with it to be honest. And I thought it was killing him. It was nice isn't like a because... definitive way of ending the Jurassic era. Like he's the brains behind. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I right, guess, it does, you know, at this point it doesn't matter because anybody could make dinosaurs, I guess, you know? So like, but you're right. You like know. he is, he's the start of it. But like, I feel like this movie without making conclusions per se, they, they did wrap up storylines nicely. Like, like there, there is a way where they could continue this franchise and never have to touch on Dr. Wu again, because he's like, it's it's nice. It's nicely wrapped up. He's not dead. He could, you could certainly make a case for the fact that like somebody paid him more money and now he's making dinosaurs again. Sure. But like, they don't ever have to go that way. Same thing with the, you know, the original trio or whatever, like you could say like, yeah, there's definitely a way you could bring them back, but you don't also don't ever have to. So I, so I understand I the, like... the issue, issue there though. You know, like it would be nice to have a conclusion, but you know, I feel like, and this is part, this is on me. We're, we're really just sticking to like Jurassic world dominion. Do you have, do you have a list of like what the new things were? Or do you have better memory of what the oh, new yeah, things have, were? Cause maybe... I have a, a list. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to go through that list and and see if I even remembered it being new. Um, all right. So let me, f- for me, um, the prologue. At this point in time, I've seen the prologue so many times that I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, can, can we like skip past this? You know, can we like, can we get on with it? Like, I'm I'm feeling like I'm just check. I'll just check my phone. You know, like I know this. Big scene. mistake to release you know? that early. Big mistake. To me, it's like it's like when an album comes out and like you've got like you've heard the singles so many times that you're like, I don't want to hear those songs anymore. I want to skip to the new ones. And like that's to me what the prologue is. I'm like, I've I know that I, I've seen it so many times. I've taken so many screenshots. Mm. I've I've capped it. You know, I've, I know what's going on here. Let's just move on. Um, so to me, it just is the prologue. Like it, it's not part of the movie. It's just the prologue. So that's my issue with the prologue being there is that I don't necessarily care that it's there. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there, there is some like, uh, 
uh, swapping of like scenes and stuff here. Like the Mosasaur scene is is in a different place than now. This like news segment takes place before the Mosasaur scene when it took place. It was the Mosasaur scene used to be the opening of the movie. Um, right. And there was there was like more stuff. There was actually in the extended cut, we actually have less of the Mosasaur scene, so yes, it's a little bit did. shorter now. Yeah, um, which I was like, okay, that's fine. But I actually like the stuff that's in the theatrical cut because it like takes its time a little bit more with that. Um, let's see. Obviously, we have the poacher scene here, um, which we talked about yeah, already. Which is good. Um, Maisie stopped to look. F- look around for blue at one point while riding her bike. You have the tackle shop that she went to for some, I guess some fishing supplies and stuff, but um, yeah. 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 She's homeschooled. Right. Yeah. And I like that. Like, um, you know, after reading the Maisie Lockwood book, you know, the book was really about like them kind of, I think they were like tracking down blue and like trying to find a place for them and stuff like that. And, this this kind of like opens up in that same way where like Maisie's chopping some wood and she like hears Blue out there and then like next thing you know she's like on her bike. I thought she'd be like tracking Blue, but then she's got like headphones mm-hmm. on and she's like not paying attention. But I think she hears Blue and she like stops to like look around. But then it's like yeah. whatever Blue's out there or whatever it doesn't matter at that point. Um, but and and also you get that that tackle shop scene where the girl you know the lady's like where do you live? Like, aren't you supposed to be at school right now or whatever? And she's like, I'm homeschooled. And the, the lady's like, where's home? And it's like, you, I like this idea of like, these people are roaming around kind of like it's described in the book. And you know, they're, they're kind of trying to track down uh, blue and stuff like that. So it makes me question, like, I know we've, everybody's been wondering, like, is that actually the house that Owen was building <laughs> like in, in fallen <laughs> kingdom? Like, yeah, I don't think it is, I think, at this point, because, like, why would people be questioning them and, and stuff like that at this point if, if they had a home there or whatever? I don't know. But um, but yeah, so that's interesting. Um, we There's a new scene with those hunters that are in the woods. And they uh, after Blue and, and Beta get that wolf. There's two yeah. hunters, I guess, like a. I, what I assumed was like a dad and a son or something like that. And they're, they're aiming up beta, I think at that scene. And then blue does that slow motion, like charge at them. And I guess just kills two humans right there. So, you it's know, giving I mean. some, yeah. Giving some like, you know, scariness, I guess, to the, uh, the character again. Um, there's a bit of an extension at, um, the campfire scene with Owen and Maisie, which I was like, actually, I was actually happy about this because like there's a part where Maisie like flips her knife after Owen and then, yeah. Um, and then May, uh, Claire walks up and she's like, Ooh, stone cold. And I was like, I, I was like fine with the reaction in the theater, but I also was like, okay, wow. She just said like, uh, th- that was weird. Like I thought there was something off about it. And then when the extended cut comes in, it's like, it actually makes sense because like Owen and her are talking about cutting something vital. And then like, saying something yeah. cool when you stab the guy or whatever and then it makes sense when when claire walks in and she's like oh wow stone cold um you know what i wish there was a little extension on is the burning blankets thing burning <laughs> i'm burning old blankets because yeah why is she burning blankets i mean to me i i look i think the reason that she's burning blankets is because i, I think she throws in that hat that she was wearing at, you know, during the, the pseudoceratops scene. So I think she's like burning the evidence. The evidence of her disguise or her outfit. Yeah. yeah. And maybe some, bl- I don't know if there was blankets, if she was actually burning blankets or not, but it, it just comes off weird because like, who says that? Who just, who's just burning blankets? And then Maisie's just like, yeah, whatever. Blankets, you know, she, as one does burning blankets <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> You've never burned blankets before. I mean, it's a Friday tradition. <laughs> a blanket has hit 10 years. We burn it, right? It's yeah, yeah, exactly. I, we've done it, you know, 10 times this weekend. So, uh, many times. Yeah. so like, that to me, oh, I wish funny. there was, like, more context in the movie because, like, as that scene was coming up, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to get some more context to the burning blankets. And then, it was, no, there was no extra context. <laughs> so, you know, okay. whatever. 
But I, I think we understand, you know, visually and just like through what happens that like she's burning the the okay. clothes or whatever. And I think she throws in her hat or whatever at the very start of the scene. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. Obviously, there's all the the stuff at the farmer house with Ellie, which is nice because it like explains what Ellie is up to. What More, she, I know, like that you know, she's in the house with the kids, right? This is new, and she's explaining mm-hmm. her what her Game Boy does, um, and it again, like not really necessary, but like I saw Jaws over uh, this last week in theaters for the re-release, and that movie is so plotting. And I, like I saw Jaws uh, with uh, my wife, my sister-in-law who we've all seen it, but like my nephew who is 15, 14, maybe like he's probably seen it once maybe on television or something and interrupted probably. Yeah. And then my niece who is 17 has never seen Jaws. And it was interesting to get their thoughts because Jaws is inarguably the first blockbuster right like it is the seed for everything that we enjoy yeah. today right um and, and i said to my niece you know had you have you seen that movie she's like no i said what'd you think she's like it was slow it's like it's like you know old man here like how oh, dare you say it was supposed to is <laughs> you don't see that yeah. shark for an hour and a half yeah not really not well um and it's a lot of like scenes in, in the house where they're the kid is mimicking the dad and it's scenes with Hooper explaining explaining sharks to an audience that maybe doesn't know about sharks, right? It's also Quint explaining a whole different aspect about sharks that the audience needs to know about sharks. Um, it's it's the police chief reading a book about sharks so that the audience can learn about sharks. It's like <laughs> this movie was lacking a lot of context in the theatrical version for just some of the things we were going to see. And, uh, and it, they, they lost that context in favor of just getting to the action faster. When yeah. I, from like an executive point of view, I guess I get it. But like from an audience point of view, it's like some of this stuff is necessary to know. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, you basically have her arrive and just say, like, look, I'm studying plants so that I, uh, p- plants from the past so that I know plants in the future and how to protect them. Right. And then she's like, got this, like, which reminded me of, like, the, um, th- that thing that you have, the, the talking guy. What's that talking guy's name? The, uh, the 2XL. Robot? 2XL. 2XL. She's got, yeah. she has this like DNA reader that looks like it's like 2XL <laughs> technology. And I'm like, dude, like, yeah, like, she, like I said, it's a Game Boy. Like she had a DNA yeah. reader in 1992. Like, I don't think so. It looks hilarious. Um, like, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. But it's adding context about like, oh, I have to gather this DNA and then I have to get one from the source. So like, ex- it really exactly. helps. Yeah, yeah exactly. it really helps. And um, then you have that grant at the dig site stuff. And then, then in a tent with Ellie. Yeah. Um, it's there's funny funny context like the the scene with Kayla um at the uh Malta thing she's like sitting on her throne and uh it's Lovely, it's yeah. yeah it's very much like you know this buyer comes up and he's like I got some cargo to transport and he's like oh, you know what do you think about 2000 and then that's I think it just like cuts off there in the in the theatrical cut. It, you know, it just cuts to uh, uh, Claire and Kayla in the bathroom. But in the extended cut, it actually is like he actually like looks over at the Lystrosaurus and he's like, "Ooh, what do you think? I'll buy." It, like he gets sidetracked on the the transporting the cargo, right. and he's like, "Oh, I'm, right. what do you think about? Can I buy that thing for two thousand? And then she's like, "No, like how about eight thousand? So it's like the context is completely different. To, to the money that's being offered in the theatrical cut, it seems like it's just for transportation, which is fine. And it works fine in theatrical cut. But when you change everything around, it, it's a completely different context. And then it leads to the scene of the fight between the Lysosaurus and the Oviraptor. Right. And, right. and biting the head off, which, like, is not unnecessary. But, like, it's there and it's fun, whatever. It's, it's fine. Uh, you get to see that birds and dinosaurs are very similar, you know? like a chicken with its head yeah. cut off you know it's running around still yeah <laughs> right so <on>. yeah yeah <laughs> beheaded um, chicken dinosaur. 
Yeah, and you you got that Carno, uh, the Allosaurus throwing the guy to the Carno. Uh, there's that that moment that was recreated in Malta at that influencer event thing, whatever it was. Um, Claire is actually running through clothes, and then you also have the 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 thing. Uh, what is it called? The uh, Atrociraptor also running through the clothes. It's like added also, an added shot. <laughs> I don't know if I ever said this. I did like this idea that the. Uh, you have the Indominus, right? And they're going to make it smaller. And the way the Indo- the Indoraptor works is you point the gun with the laser, which doesn't make any sense because if you have a gun, why do you need to point a Raptor at it? But anyway, they shrink that down <laughs> even more to basically these Atrociraptors, and uh, it's just a la- it's just a laser pointer. Like they recognize the laser pointer, and then so it's kind of like that carry that carrying of that technology now. I don't know if I said it on the last show. My only real issue with the Malta sequence is how much better, I think I did go on a rant about this because it's about selling toys. Just how much better would it have been if instead of Atrociraptors, it was every individual legacy Raptor. Sure. You know, that would just would have been a moment. Like, I think that would have been, that would have been very cool. I just, for me, I'm. I was actually watching it last, last night, and I'm like, I I remember like seeing these uh, Atrociraptors, you know, well in advance. We all saw like picture of the yeah. head bust or whatever, and and then the 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 different graphics that were out there, the renders. And I was just like, oh god, I'm not looking forward to these things. They're gonna look hideous. I'm not gonna like this design. It's gonna be so weird. And then like the movie came out, and I was like, they are amazing. I love how they look. They are so yeah. scary and so cool. So to me, I'm like, I'm like, yes, having the original Raptors would have been amazing. It would have. I feel like there would have been a. You would have had to explain things a little bit, right? Like you would have needed to explain a little bit more. Um, and I was thinking about it actually last night. I was like, hmm, what, what was the deal with these Atrociraptors? Where were they going? I think it said like Riyadh or something like that. And, and they okay. were transporting them there. But I'm like, well, okay, well, this is like a story in and of itself. I'm like, what is what is this? What? Like, we kind of just brush by the fact that they, we've got these trained Atrociraptors that are going somewhere. They, they're supposed to be transported somewhere. What's the story? And we never get any kind of context to what they are, which I think is fine in the movie, within the movie. It's fine. Like, we don't really need any extra context. But, like, as a podcaster who's sitting here talking about it for three hours... I want to know more about whatever they were doing. So that's that was fun for me to like think about last night. Um, there was the added scene in the uh, airplane of like Owen and Claire kind of checking on each other after that sequence. Yeah, to see, like oh, are you are you hurt? Like am I am I okay? Am I still like do I have any holes? Like am I good? No, so you're yeah. fine. Uh, so I kind of like that. It, it felt very real to me. Like I felt like you know. And the, and the, actually, uh, the, they there was like an extended hu- extended hug in that sequence because they do hug in the theatrical one, but the hug go- goes on a little bit longer. And they actually added music under there, you know, from Jurassic World. I think it was like the end of like the family theme or something like that. I forget. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like, oh, that's very nice the way it wraps up there, and it like it has that nice sentimental music underneath. And then I was like listening to the theatrical, and it actually didn't do that. So I was like, okay, I like this one better. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, for at that point, we actually don't get anything new. I don't. I don't believe. I didn't see anything until the amber. For a while. Mine. Yeah, until yeah. the amber mine sequence, which it was like, it was just like a little bit of Grant like trying to convince Maisie to go through the tunnels and stuff like that. So really, not nothing too important there. Um, some nice context for Ellie, I guess. Um, yeah, you you get like a weird sequence of Dodgson deleting stuff. Um, this is kind of, I guess maybe hard to explain, but like in the theatrical cut, um, it goes from like Malcolm taking that truck to the amber mines, like back to the mm-hmm. amber mines, and in the extended one, it actually goes from like the truck to. Uh, dodged and like deleting files on the computer, which we do see in the theatrical cut, but later in the movie. Um, I think so. It's like, it, yeah, it, things, are cut, things are like cut differently. So he's like deleting stuff on the computer, 
He sees that the locusts are jumping continents or whatever. And then we, but then we cut to, we extend that a little bit. So then we get the server room, which I, is not in the theatrical cut. Um, and he's like deleting stuff there. Ramsey's like, what are you doing? Are you, are you deleting stuff right now? Like, you know, so it's kind of, it's kind of weird, I think, but it, 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 it's fine, whatever it is. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I like the context of like, you, this is bad. What we're doing here. These locusts are going to like destroy everything. Um, and then he takes that hard drive with him. Um, but, uh, yeah, then there's like, uh, some different stuff with, oh, it, it, it's a like previously the, they cut from the Dilophosaurus scene with Claire to Dodge and then deleting the files. So things are like all out of order. Um, but then we got Dodgson's office, um, with the Barbasol can. It's like slightly extended because in the theatrical cut, he doesn't have the hard drive, but in the, the in the extended cut, we see him put the hard drive in the briefcase or whatever. So it's like little, little random things like that, that kind of are added in. He's not um, deleting it. He's taking it with him. Right. He's like taking it with, he did delete stuff on like a laptop or something. And then he also took the hard drive with him and put it in his bag. Um, yeah. And then that's it until the one little thing, which is actually, I think my favorite addition, which is during the battle at the end of the movie, the T-Rex is out for the count. And it was funny because I'm watching this moment. Um, oh, yeah, know, yeah, for yeah. the first for the first time I'm watching it, you know, in, in in my basement here. I've got it on the big screen and I'm like, whoa, what's that? I was like, what did I just see something? Because the T-Rex is out. It's 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 essentially dead in that moment. Right. It's just laying yeah. there, knocked out. There's lightning strikes and stuff like that. And and you're like, oh, my God, what's happening? And there was like a little flash of something. And I was like, what, what, what was that? Did I, did I see what I thought I saw? And then I, I like, I just watched the rest of the movie. I just kept watching the rest of the movie. And then I, the movie ends and I'm like, I got to go back and check this. Cause I feel like I saw a flashback to like the 65 million years ago. Cause like I saw, I thought I saw trees, like real trees. I'm yeah. like, but maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. But then when I rewound it, I'm like, oh my God, I did see that. It was literally, actually they added no time to the sequence. The time is exactly the same. So you're watching the, I was watching the theatrical and it, it didn't add anything on. It didn't add an extra second. It just flashed and added in like a shot from the 65 million years ago, kind of, which I thought yeah. was brilliant because at that point I had never noticed really that the sculptures and the things around this, this rotunda area were reminiscent of the trees from 65 million years ago. Yeah. Like they're the same yeah, yeah, sculpture, yeah. the same looking out outlines and silhouettes. So to me, when that happened, I was just like, what, what actually, did I see something or no? Like, was I playing my mind playing tricks on me because of the lightning? But then it happened and I was like, that was such a brilliant little thing Which because is... it kind of plays into what you were talking about earlier with the, with the memory of like the dinosaur in a way. It's like, this T -Rex there's something is in there. that T Rex. It's, mm -hmm. it, it, and that's what like kind of like blew my mind that when they announced they were not doing the, the prologue, I was like, wait, that's your through line. Why are you getting rid of that? And the answer basically was because you showed it to everyone and it's not really necessary to the story of our characters, but mm -hmm. it kind of is necessary. It's a revenge story, basically. It's, it's like if somehow the T-Rex at the, if, if somehow the T-Rex was not dead in Jurassic Park 3, and came back and killed the Spinosaur. It's like, it's that level of like, they, they took away the revenge story in Fallen King or in Dominion. So it's like, why did you get rid of that? Man, I mean, again, this ending, this ending sequence of like, showing the, the, the whole like, well, we just put little electrodes in their brain and we tell them where to go. I'm like, okay, so you've, you've figured out control. Like, I, I kind of again like Italy is just another site B. We've they've figured out how to control dinosaurs. You put little implants in their brain. You can create Jurassic Park again because we now know how to control them on where to go. Even if they get out of their cage, we can be like go back, right? Like 
there are things yeah. where I'm like, that seemed unnecessary. Why not just have, I, I felt like they could have created something better to bring the dinosaurs or have dinosaurs in that arena um, thing. And yeah, that was weird. I, I do. I still am like, you, you made all of this and that's where you're sending them to your facility. There's not like right. another con like containment place. Like that's just wild. Like I'm, just, but I'm like whatever. You know that's fine. It, it is what it is. But I, I, to me, I'm just like you know, if if I was to do it, there would definitely be another place. But I guess it would not make for a better ending. A very sequence, exciting, a very exciting yeah. dinosaur <laughs> battle ending, right? Like, why um, would they be over there? Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know, and I I think, and part of me thinks that COVID changed Wu's ending. I feel like Wu's ending hmm. could have been changed in reshoots or editing. Like, oh, let's shoot both because whatever. But the one thing that I cannot believe was not integral to the script was Blue being a larger part of this story. Um, sure. I don't know if we're going to talk about the art tonight. It's up to you if you want to keep going. Um, but Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, there was there was some art that came out where it was like Owen and Alan uh, doing the the hand motion with the Pyroraptor, um, and I don't know if it's just the extended cut. Maybe I miss it in the theatrical, but there's a there's a felt to me a longer sense of Alan coming to the understanding that Raptors have been trainable like this whole time. And when he puts his hand out, there's a music swell. Yeah. There's a music swell that happens as Alan successfully becomes a Raptor Wrangler basically. And I yeah. actually teared up a little bit when it happened this time around. And it was just so deflated by the fact that it was beta and not blue. Like hmm. if Alan had met blue and was able to be a part of that interaction, I think it would have been so much better. Now they would have had to have figured out a way to be like, yes, now blue is compliant and we'll get in, in transport cages. But I think about, I don't know if it was a script or someone's idea or some leak or what, but like this idea that like, I don't even know if it was Owen, but it was like the Raptor Wrangler, like parachuting out of the plane with a Raptor in a box that also parachutes down. And like the Raptor was mobile around the world in this sense, but something it was like, I needed blue to be on the adventure with them as wasn't that from the the sales script or something like that? I Maybe. feel like it was I mean, something from there. Which is totally a banana's idea, but Jurassic World did a good job, I felt. Jurassic World 1 and 2 did a good job of taking these crazy ideas that we've seen and implementing them in a better way. Like that's why mm -hmm. I yeah, I've yeah. given I feel like I've given Trevorrow a lot of credit for being like he's taken the ridiculous and made it logical. You know, in context of the story. And to not at the beginning of all this be like, no, look, you can't just have blue at the beginning. Like she's our marketing. She's our mascot for this, yeah. this franchise. Like she has to go on the adventure. Do we need to, do we need to do some kind of montage where we explain that blue is becoming even more compliant, like over time and, and the relationship and yeah. the bond between Owen and blue is getting better. Like, Whatever you have to do to make that happen should have happened, I think, at the writing phase of this movie. I could see that. I, yeah, I could definitely have seen them, like, saying that, oh, in the past four years, they've been practicing, you know, and they, they've, they're, they you know, whatever. <laughs> but, like, and, and I would have been like, yeah, sure, they practice. They're, it's good. They're a good team. Um, but uh, I'm actually fine with it. I think it is wild that that blue is basically non-existent i think that's crazy it's because nuts like we said like we said earlier about the merchandising like owen is the face of the merchandise like owen is the face of the franchise while claire's story is but also next to owen is usually blue or something and blue is everywhere mm -hmm. and it's like blue's always going to be a good good guy because it's 
what we want to sell to our kids and our families and everybody to come see these movies and to buy the things. Um, but it's so it's wild to me that like blue was all over the marketing again and and stuff, but like just non-existent. So it's I don't know. I, yeah. I honestly can't believe they did that. Like I really can't. I'm okay with it though because like I'm glad that it wasn't just a retread of like okay now blues along for this journey now blues in a haunted mansion you know fighting <laughs> you know whatever so I'm glad that that didn't happen and we didn't have blue you know fighting a, a whatever pyroraptor or something like that um, yeah I don't know but I, I I'm okay with it but I understand like that it's so weird it's so strange um, anything else about the extended cut um, before we move on to totally onto I this concept uh just can't pieces. believe i'm in a podcast where i'm saying i enjoyed this movie that's all i'm i'm so glad man i'm I, you know maybe you're 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 being a little more positive than you'd like to be i don't know but i uh i'm glad no i didn't hate three hours watching this movie today i think i think maybe the, with more time and and more distance you'll like it i feel like this movie like with like with that marketing had a lot uh of hype and it had a lot of emotion involved in it it's the conclusion my heroes are back it's, it has a lot riding on it right when you see this movie yeah. for the first time there's a lot of energy and emotion tied to this movie and then if it doesn't satisfy you that in that way like i can i can see very much being let down and hurt like kind of hurt by it you know um but i i'm glad it didn't happen for me <laughs> but i'm glad that you're getting there you're getting there slowly maybe over with time you'll You'll kind of look for anyone it, out but... there who's upset that I didn't love this movie. I hated Man of Steel when I first saw it, and it is one of my favorite movies. Oh, okay. In the superhero genre I... right now, so like, yeah, that time heals all wounds. Yeah, that's a good example, I think, because that is a movie that I was like, I remember. Like, I don't remember hype a lot of times for movies, but mm -hmm. I remember oh. like before that movie and just going to the movie, talking to my wife. Uh, I forget what year did that come out? Um, 2013, 15. Yeah. So I, I, we weren't married, I guess at that point, but like, I just remember like talking to her about like how excited I was. I was like, it hit me Shoot. like right before we were going to the movie. And I was like, man, I was like, Oh my, I'm very excited to see this. I didn't know that I would feel this emotional about this Superman movie, but like it's hitting me. And I'm like, I'm so excited. I can't believe this. And then when I saw it, I was like, Oh, you know, didn't really it's do what I what wanted you, it to do. What you wanted, right? Yeah, but but you're right. Like I think with time, like I I'm sitting here rooting for and, and praying that like Henry Cavill comes back as Superman. You know, like I'm like, please, my guy, come back. WB, yeah. what are you doing? You know, like stop Dude. doing whatever you're doing right now and do the right thing. Um, and I, I'm also here, like, come on, Marvel, where is he? Put him in a movie, something, you know. <laughs> I'm just, now I'm just like obsessed be... with Henry Cavill. Yeah, so, uh... <laughs> I got a feeling he's gonna be Cyclops. I got a feeling. Huh. Okay. He That'd just seems like he he's just he's seems constantly like hitting the, the rumor mill. Yeah, that that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, it, hopefully with time, uh, well, uh, you know, you'll grow fonder. But uh, so let's move on to some concept art because if we will obviously still be talking about Dominion here. Um, but uh, yeah, so concept art popped up from Seth Engstrom, who's done Jurassic World, and I, I don't know if he, uh, if he did uh, Fallen Kingdom or not, but uh, Jurassic World definitely, and it's beautiful stuff. It is really, really beautiful stuff here. Um, let's move this over a little bit if I can. Um, so I what I love about these first initial things is like it's just like paleo art. And like slightly yeah, it's, shifted it's at totally times, you know. I feel like you could have gone into a book and found these images, but yeah, just make this whatever. But yeah, so beautiful stuff. Obviously, the prologue or whatever, and this is straight up the Giganotosaurus killed the T Rex walking away, whatever. Um, there's a mosquito. And then we get into the actual movie stuff here. I see. I, I I didn't even mean to do that. I didn't even consider the prologue part of the movie. Still. I was like, now right. we're getting into the movie. Uh, <laughs> um, you have the, this extended cut scene. I like that Ellie is just like, like '90s Ellie here, like very similar. Um, now this is what I meant before about like it's just paleo art, but like with a slight shift here because like yeah, this 
Colin was probably like, hey, Seth, uh, could you make like paleo art like with just dinosaurs roaming around? But also just could you like throw cowboys in there? And he's like, uh, yeah. Well, it's sure. it's like Ray Harryhausen stuff, right? It's like, could you do it's... modern Ray Harryhausen? Yeah, I feel, I feel like this is like uh, Bob Ross. It's like, could you just make some some wispy clouds and some, you know, trees? Some happy trees. Like happy but, trees you know, or whatever. Throw a T-Rex little in squirrel it. over here. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, and then, yeah, just throw like these dinosaurs in there and then some cowboys. Like this, you could just take out these cowboys and it would just be amazing paleo art. You know, and maybe you've got a problem with it because the parasaurs look a little different, but uh, but otherwise, this would be amazing paleo art. <laughs> I mean, for me, the most offensive thing is is that they decided really early on to change the Parasaurolophus. Like, yeah, 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 you're um, right. Like, this is identical to like what we see. Like, yeah. So like, that that it's all Seth's yeah. fault. Like, that's the problem. It's Seth out here saw some it's cool just, paleo I don't have art a problem <laughs> i don't have the problem with the new design i have a problem with the new design the existence context, of it like yeah in context with the film like these are new yeah. dinosaurs clearly why do they look different it doesn't make any sense to me no one knows whatever no one knows whatever um, so yeah, some cool paleo art with some cowboys. Uh, so let's see. All now right, here, here we go. go. This, talk about nineties. <laughs> they didn't even yeah. bother to like change up Ellie or Alan. <laughs> Ellie is exactly the same. Yeah, she's li literally straight from the movie. Um, and then Alan, same thing, but he's got a beard. He, he like looks like right. today Alan, but just old clothes. Ian is yeah. like, I don't know what's going on here with Ian. He's yeah, like, no idea. A little different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like how like fleshed out this is. Like, it, this looks like the place. You know, this is pretty right. good, pretty legit from the start. Um, this I kind of wish like this looked like this because this is way cooler. And uh, uh, sorry for the podcast, yeah. we're really not doing a good job at describing this. Um, but um, so this is probably really boring. But here we've got um, Ian in the lecture hall area, and in the movie, it's just like generic lecture hall. It looks fine, whatever it is, and it's pretty small. Not a lot of people. Um, this is like a much more like a bigger you know lecture hall. I actually like this a lot. I didn't notice it before, but it looks like Alan and Ellie are right here. Um, so that's oh, crazy! Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So I mean, that definitely is Alan, right? And that's got to be her. Maybe she has yeah. his book. Maybe she's she brought his book along. Um, maybe, maybe. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. I like I like the. Uh, floral like arrangements and stuff the the tr the trees and stuff back there or whatever it is um here it is again it's like oh let's Colin's like let's shrink it down maybe not so extravagant and then we essentially get to the movie part which is just like nothing um <laughs> but um <laughs> they they rented a hall that looks nothing yeah. like the one in the film <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah so and then they're like well, got... wait we're stuck we're stuck in the hotel um <laughs> they, they have a conference room here right yeah, yeah. Okay. i think um which i think I, it, it, if I remember correctly, I think it was like some school it just that in the UK that they just used the, the hall. Um, I like sure. this concept art, which is Owen and Ian, uh, not Ian, uh, Alan and Maisie confronting Beta, which kind of looks like Beta. just blue. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I love about this is this is just JP3 Alan. <laughs> Yes, it totally is. It's it's yeah. JP three Allen. He's got like his shirts open a little bit. He looks. He's got like the Indian yeah. like Temple of Doom kind that's, of style look here. Funny. It's like, yeah. it's so funny. It's just JP three Allen. Um, this this concept art is the Biosyn like control center, which it, like yeah, yeah like that's whatever. it. It looks exactly like it. Um, yeah. I'm trying to look at this. I was like, is this that thing that was like that image that was teased? No, but it's just like computer stand. No, it looks like not. that thing that Colin had teased, you know, like early don't on. Give that that like, going don't, don't give that up. image. They're going the sword. Don't give that image more credit than it deserves. I'm still bitter about oh, it. Oh, I know. This uh, this one here is a Carnotaurus like attacking like a meat shop or whatever, and I'm like a butcher shop or whatever. It's, I don't know what this would have been if it was like a Malta sequence or like a now this sequence or something, but uh, yeah, whatever. Funny. That would have been yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, now this is where the good oh, stuff oh, starts to really this happen. This is where so much we can talk this about is here. Where so, you take my heart, you Indiana Jones it, you rip it out of the chest. <laughs> this is where I my yeah. soul breaks a little bit. 
Yeah, so uh, we because... had heard Yeah, we had heard a long time ago, right, that Jake Johnson was was to be involved in this movie. Um, but then COVID happened and then they couldn't work out the scheduling or whatever the case may be. I know he had a TV show that he was committed to, but then it was canceled. So I'm like, all right, now's the time. Let's get him out there. But I guess he had other commitments. I don't know. Um, but he could not get there. Maybe it was COVID or whatever, but Jake Johnson's in this concept art in essentially what is the He's Franklin the FBI role. Agent. Yeah. yeah he, a CIA, whatever. So in the middle in the middle of the movie, Franklin is in the CIA and he's working on this task force that is, you know, tracking down these dinosaur interactions or whatever. And this is that scene. Like this is that role. And it's perfect for Lowry. Like it is it is, it is. Lowry. Like that is so good. I um I remember seeing oh, I remember seeing Dominion for the first time. And I knew it. I was like this was supposed to be the Jake Johnson scene because we've said before Franklin and Lowry kind of like easily can be plucked, you know, and, and replaced all around. Yeah. But yeah. something about Franklin working at the CIA doesn't make any sense. He doesn't have the personality that could do it. In fact, if you couldn't get Jake Johnson to do this role, I would argue that the next best person would have been the girl that he was with in the control room in Jurassic World. I, I just feel like Franklin didn't oh, need to Vivian? be the next jump. What? Yeah. Vivian, I think it was her name, right? Vivian. Yeah. It could have been Vivian yeah. in this role instead. And I think I would have liked that more than Franklin. I mean, I, it's no secret Franklin's not my favorite character, but I thought what Franklin was doing in the beginning of this movie made sense he's just tagging along with claire because he's just he's an aimless character he really has no sense of goals or purpose whereas like lowry loved the di like loved the dinosaurs of jurassic park and i feel like if he was approached by the c the cia he'd be like yes like i still want to be involved with like I, I don't want harm to come to these animals like i want to get them back where they belong you know yeah yeah um, yeah, and I, yeah. I just all oh, this breaks my heart to get like this actual confirmation that this was supposed to be the Jake Johnson role, um, but I mean it yeah. is what it is. Yeah, and I remember them saying like I think Jake Johnson did like an interview or something and said like oh yeah they got a really cool role for me but like I just I couldn't make it happen or something like that and I'm like oh that like knowing the context now of what that cool role would have been oh it's so it's so upsetting because like. <laughs> You know, uh, so I'm looking up Franklin here. I forgot what his role was in uh, the DPG, but he was a systems analyst. So, like, I guess, you know, that could translate to whatever he was doing in the CIA, I guess. So he could work. And even in the even in the CIA sequence, he says something like, I'm not qualified for anything else. Don't get me in trouble or whatever. So, like, right. you know, he, you, you had mentioned he seems kind of aimless and stuff in the beginning. Um, and I like that, like, in the beginning, you could have had him say, look, Claire, we got to give this up. I've got another gig. I've got a gig coming up. Like, I don't want to do this. I can't do this anymore. I can't get myself in trouble. And then later on, you still could have Jake Johnson in this role. And Jake Johnson flips through the iPad, and he sees Vivian, he sees Barry, and he sees Franklin. And you're like, oh, okay, now I know what his role was. I know what the job was that he was going to be getting. So it, it could have worked. Right. You could still do it. You don't have to change anything in the beginning. You don't have to, like, add any context or anything. He just is different now. And... uh the one thing I would oh. say is a little bit different is um, the there's a line which actually is at – let me skip ahead a little bit here. There's a few shots. This sequence here where he he actually leaves the facility, goes outside, and he shows them the rain Delacorte stuff and how to track him down. Um, yeah. This, this sequence, Franklin has a line where he's like, he's like, oh. I told you you couldn't steal a human or whatever, you know, and he's like, you can't, I told you you wouldn't get away with that with Maisie. So if Lowry was to say that they would have had to have reworked that. Cause like he, yeah. he shouldn't know anything about that. So I would have, I would have been interested to see like how they would have, but you know, kind of gone Lowry, across that way. Lowry knows about Maisie because Maisie's all over the news. There's like a rumor. This could have been the moment where Lowry's like, Wait, are you serious? It was you two? You have this girl. Oh, you perfect, can't just take perfect. a human. Perfect. Like, 
And you sounded like him too. That was perfect. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like this could have been the moment where he realizes like the girl is real and these two people have been hiding her. And he, it, it could have been like, you can't, what are you two doing? You can't steal a human. I like, what am I supposed yeah. to do? I have to go upstairs now, you know, and yeah, like I I supposed to, to do you. lie to everybody upstairs. Ugh. That would have been yeah. great. So perfect. I could see Jake Johnson doing that. I mean, we're still yeah. watching New Girl all the time, and I could hear him saying those words, you know, like. So, um, I'm like, what does he say? I'm like gas half full, rich. I love that. <laughs> Look, I'm really rich now. Like gas, gas tank half full, rich. <laughs> um, but this is this is such a bummer. Um, you know, uh, let me skip back here. But uh, yeah, I uh, I think this would have worked out really well. And it would have been great to have the cameos in the beginning, Franklin and Zia. And and then you have another cameo here with um, Jake Johnson. And then you have another cameo later with Barry. That would have been so amazing just to have that one after another. Oh, man. I mean, it, look, having Franklin in the be- in the middle is fine. It's great. Whatever. I like Franklin. I think Justice Smith does a great job here. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine this, the way this it is. is no There's hate. nothing wrong yeah. with the way it is. There's no hate with Justice Smith in this section. It's literally just – I just I love Lowry so much. I love what they did with that character in Jurassic World. I just would have loved for him to be in this movie and knowing that this was the sequence with him and spotting it myself because I – I understand the characters are similar but different. Like I remember being in the theater and being mm-hmm. like, "This is the Lowry. This is totally the Lowry scene," and being right about it makes me yeah just bummed. I I didn't even think about it. You know, to be honest, I uh, never gave it a thought like of what the scene could have been once I saw the movie. I, never crossed my mind. So to see these images, I'm like, oh, of course, it makes so much sense. Yeah. And it's like, how could he have not been able to film this scene? It's like, I mean, I guess it, you would have had to do the <laughs> interior stuff, but then he would have also had to go, you know, to the outside sequence and, and film this stuff. And I remember I remember seeing these shots when they were filming it. Like, I remember them sitting at this table. I remember, like, the crowd, and because that was around COVID, where I was like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm surprised that they're filming this with all these people around. Because at that time, I, you know, we were all speculating on like, are our, our movies and TV shows just gonna have like one to two people in a scene and never any crowds anywhere? A we were shot, all speculating B shot kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I remember that 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 shot stands out to me. But I, what I don't ever remember seeing was Franklin. So I'm like, wow, they they really like hid that from me. I, I had no clue that he was even there. Um, yeah. So so that's pretty cool. But. Um, Bummer, bummer. But hopefully, maybe we can get that show that I was talking about earlier, or t- series, or movie, or whatever it is, with the, you know, the 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 B team, where it's just these other people from the movie tracking down dinosaurs. Um, but let's go back here. We've got Claire and the Dilophosaurus. Nothing too much. That's a cool shot. Whatever. Yeah. Um, the uh, the ice sequence here. You got a pyroraptor chasing down Owen and Kayla, and it looks identical. Like I'm, this just looks like it's from the movie. I, I could, you know, you can barely I'm tell still the difference. Confused. <laughs> Is the altitude so different that like it's tropical in the bottom, but like frozen at the top? Like this is some Camp Cretaceous stuff, man. I have no idea. Okay, all right. <laughs> I have no idea. It makes no sense, but also whatever. It, you know. I mean, I used to live in Los Angeles where, like, you could see snow on the top of the mountains. But, like, it was wintertime. It was farther off in the distance. Like, (laughs) it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was sweating where I wasn't. Like, I would, I would roll out of my apartment at like seven in the morning. It would be like 50 or 60 degrees. And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, there's snow up on the hills. That makes sense. Yeah. But like this is like legit like it's a frozen lake and then a tropical paradise. <laughs> I don't know. It was that I don't know if that's like a thing that really exists. It's really far down. I don't <laughs> I <guess>. No. <laughs> Getting closer you know, to the, that's core the, thing. Of the earth. I guess this movie really depends on your ability to s- suspend your, you know, disbelief or whatever, like yeah. to just let things go. Sure. Um and I, I'm I'm good at that, I guess, apparently. Because like 
yes, I understand that that makes no sense to me. But I'm also like, yeah, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's that sequence that looks cool. Um, and then we have some different uh, styled high hide things or observation decks or whatever they were, you know, in the movie where yeah. the Giganotosaurus is uh, attacking them and they're trying to get in there. Um, in this, it looks like Grant is trying to murder Owen, I think. And he's like, no, you're not getting yeah. in here. Lock, Lock him, him out. out. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like that guy's training raptors. I don't trust him. Um, but uh, and then we've got, so I was, I was trying to look at these because it was very confusing as to what's going on. But like mm -hmm. I was like, what is this? What is happening over here? It's just like a mirror or whatever, like a reflection on this observation yeah. tower thing. Like it, it obviously moves. It's supposed to move up this rail, but it's just a mirrored thing because you're looking at the Giganotosaurus, looking at a Giganotosaurus, which I'm thinking to myself, isn't this just a horrible idea to have a reflective surface in a jungle with massive <laughs> dinosaurs? Because I know like, like a dog or a cat in my house would look in a mirror and be like, yo, who's that dog? Who's that cat? And not right. have the clue that it's them. And, <laughs> you know, like, and we just, we just learned from those girls at the beginning of the movie that T-Rex is super dumb and has got a small brain. So, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen here? <laughs> you know, is only this, bad things. Is it designed to camouflage the mechanics? Like, I yeah, so I kind of think when that when the animal but... looks over, it just sees forest. But yeah, you're right. Like if an animal just walks by, it's like, yo, <laughs> what the what? And then it like attacks <laughs> the it? it attacks the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess when it's up in the trees, you know, it'll just look like more trees or whatever. Um, right. But yeah, so interesting looking sequence, and I'm glad that they changed it to a more like uh, rustic kind of like you know. Uh, northwestern looking observation tower kind of thing i don't know it kind of looks like well much cooler i think it, you know what i liked about the observation decks they give you the history of the biosyn facility it was purchased in the 90s for amber mining right but not much of the biosyn facility looks like it was 90s so okay so clearly at some point they decide we're not going to be doing amber mining here right but like I was looking at the facility where like they're with the locusts and stuff. The underground of Biosyn looks like something that like I've seen in Destiny, like the video mm -hmm. game, which is like futuristic space hallways. And I'm like, this doesn't feel very 90s to me, but these kind of felt like something out of like the late 90s, early 2000s, these observation decks. And I, I kind of appreciated that from like a design element. I felt like they had been there a while. Um, and weren't mm -hmm. like yeah. too futuristic, you know? Yeah, I like that thought. You know, uh, something I, I had noticed when I was watching uh, again was the, you had mentioned how everything is super futuristic and sci-fi looking. Um, in particular, I was like, wow, this is very like Star Wars. Like everything, like the the, mm -hmm. the tunnel system has like computer lights on like the tunnel system. I'm like, this is very like hallway and Star Wars looking place you know yeah um yeah and then there was a sequence where um claire and ellie are stuck in the chamber where there's skulking or whatever they're doing you know mm -hmm. and then i forget what happens exactly but they come back to life right that they start freaking out all the bugs and the lighting in there is so reminiscent of the lighting in like empire strikes back where like luke and vader yeah. are fighting there's reds there's yeah. blues it looks so much like that sequence and they are battling with these things i'm like are, this looks like there's lightsabering these bugs in that scene i'm like whoa this is very yeah. futuristic looking i'm like what is happening so uh yeah i think that was interesting how they you know have this old school facility it's like built on top or whatever of this, you know, new place or whatever. So pretty cool. Um, more Giganotosaurus stuff here, eating, almost eating people. Um, somebody is shooting a flare. Is this supposed to be Malcolm distracting the Giganotosaurus? Maybe a little bit different than it happens in the movie. Yeah. Um, now you had mentioned this uh, Pyroraptor sequence, sequence before here where uh, I don't, you know, we have no context to what, is happening here, but it, this seems to be the sequence where they go to find Beta, and maybe they encountered a Pyraptor instead, or whatever. I don't know how that would have fit in. That would have been like a little too much, I think, for that sequence. But right. um, 
but you have JP another JP3 Grant here with a beard um yeah. and just Jurassic World Owen <laughs> so uh I like it it's cool it's a cool shot it made me think though I was like man imagine if like oops I just saved that picture see I just saved an NFT I guess right there uh um, <laughs> there it is uh <laughs> un- unknowingly did it myself um it made me think of like if there was ever like an idea of like having blue have offspring that had feathers or something like that that would have been pretty cool if, i don't know how that would have happened like if beta defeats, had feathers or something but it defeats their um it, it kind of defeats the uh the storyline they have that beta is perfectly blue um mm-hmm. but yeah of course of course there has been talk in the past of maybe this is me in my in my quote head canon or maybe i <laughs> in my read head this, i was like, talking on, about this or like maybe this was like a theory on a board like a an internet board back in the day but it was like when they when people were trying to justify the the raptors on nublar for jp3 i remember reading or thinking of or making up in my head like something where it was like as the dinosaurs begin to breed they start to regress into what they actually were yeah yeah like stylistically I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe at some point Blue had a baby that was more of dinosaur than she was, but that doesn't make any sense. Like, no, it just genetics think of it that way. Because like the skin, yeah. Advanced. I'm no, I have no uh, expertise on genetics or anything, but I'm like, I was like, maybe there's a way that that could have happened because like the scale of this shot is very interesting because this pyraptor looks tiny, like super tiny. Yeah. Um, because yeah. of the, but it also it reminds me of that shot that you had redone, right? Like from that uh oh, yeah, kenner yeah, pack or whatever yeah. it was it's kind of similar yeah. to that like reflected a different way and a little bit different but um yeah it's, it's a cool shot i i like this i just don't know how it would have fit into the movie um and i know everybody's like i can't believe we would have gotten this it's like no we wouldn't have necessarily gotten this you know it's it was just concept art it's... piece of concept art yeah yeah. So let's not get too upset. Uh, after I, we say that, after just freaking out about Jake Johnson for you know, I was gonna say like except for the Jake Johnson <laughs> one that is Jake Johnson that is written that stone <laughs> that is biblical. Well, we know um, we have like proof that like there was going to be something, you know, and we've had they've yeah. talked about it. Colin, Jake, they've both talked about something. Um, so now somebody has to talk to Jake again and and Colin or whoever and just say like we know what the scene was. I want to know more. But uh, but that's all of the concept art we have right now from Seth Engstrom. So super great, really, really awesome uh, concept art, really beautiful stuff. But I think the highlight is absolutely the uh, the Jake Johnson stuff there. But, uh, you know, How... any of these paleo art, we could put this stuff like on our wall like right now. It's so beautiful, you know. It's so good. I wonder how much of this will wind up in that book i've not pre-ordered mine yet actually they like 70 dollars for it on Amazon. yeah i actually have it right here let me take a look so here it is um I, I came prepared here so i wanted to showcase it because when you bring up the book itself there are some new images here and uh if you look here there you go oh yeah, yeah there's some there's of one of them we right there just looking at yeah yep so there's one right there so uh somebody had asked the other day while i was live streaming and they said the same thing that you just said i wonder how much will end up in the book and uh and i was like well there's there's at least evidence that one picture will end up in the book at least one picture (laughs) so uh not the picture i would have chosen but it's 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 there at least so you know from the early stages you could tell that seventy dollars man what are they doing asking seventy dollars for that book yeah, you know, um, we I, know I it'll be it was, thirty at some point. Yeah, I, I that's what I was gonna say. I think the um, other one, the the Jurassic Park visual history or whatever, really took a nosedive at some point, like right after or right before the release. So maybe just keep yeah. an eye on it. You know, keep an eye on it. Um, but yeah, seventy ninety nine for the ultimate visual history for Jurassic World. Um, and you know what? Like, I love the the original one, the or the Jurassic Park one, but like. I opened it and I breezed through it and I took out the stuff and looked at it real quick and then I put it back in a drawer. So I, I, that's why it's not worth seventy dollars. I really got to read it at some point, but like uh, again, it's like the games. I don't know when I'm gonna do any of these things. You know, 
<laughs> like when do you find the time to do it so i don't know but uh this has been three and a half hours of the jurassic wire i think we did a great job tonight i think uh, i think we did i think job, you so could split uh... this i think you could split this once a month you can take this episode <laughs> split it in half and then and, and then do two episodes time. okay yeah. yeah yeah you know that's the only problem and, and the problem was initially with the not 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 problem but like with the wire we would wait to the end of the month to record, right? Yeah, we did it at the end of the month. And, you know, at that point, I'm like, well, some of this news has been out here for a whole month. You know, like, I know it's like, it's not the new, the, the latest news that we're talking about, but, you know, we wanted to cover this topic. Now we're like, well, this was like two months ago or whatever. So hopefully you care still. No I don't movie. know. But yeah, who, who cares? Who cares? We're talking about 1993 movie that has been making movies for 30 years. So <laughs> who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we covered some really good, good topics here tonight and uh, or today, whenever you're listening to this and uh, hope you enjoyed it. So <sighs> Three three and a half hours. I mean, that's fairly typical for us, right? It's not too too outlandish. I, I do have I do have final thoughts though. I do have final. All thoughts. All right. Oh, all right. Let's go ahead. I, some final I just thoughts want to thank, here before we leave. I just want to thank Eric Deline for asking Brad where I've been. Uh, <laughs> I have not died. Um, I don't know. We're just taking the show a little slower. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, otherwise. I left movie making about six months ago. You all know that. However, I worked on a movie about <laughs> two years ago that finally is seeing the light of day. I worked on the 3D conversion of Jaws for this latest release. And if you all could take a chance to go see it, I think it's a great time to introduce, like if you got a kid that's the right age to go see that movie. I think it's a good time. Um, I can say, and I don't mean this, I'm not trying to be nostalgic uh, or anything, but with the way everything worked out, with the way COVID was, with how we went from having multiple projects to having just just Jaws in-house, how we were unable to work as deeply with our partners overseas and how most of it was handled by the Toronto team. Like you have, you had people who were unsure of like, how COVID was going to affect their jobs. You had people who were just crazy passionate about Spielberg in general. Uh, you have a director Spielberg who took an active role in the 3d, which is kind of uncommon. Most of the time the directors it's, it's a marketing tool, really. It's not necessarily like uh, an art thing, but I can say without a doubt, jaws 3d is probably one of the most beautifully and structurally sound 3d conversions I've ever seen. This is not me being like hyperbolic <laughs> about having worked on it. Yeah. If, if you're out there and you're like, no, nah, 3d conversions are not good. Go see this movie. It is the most, it's probably one of the best 3d conversions I've ever seen. Um, wow. and it was awesome to work on it. And, uh, I, I don't think it'll be around for very long in my neighborhood. 3d is already done after a week, but, uh, Maybe hunt it down. Well, well it's worth a little, it. well worth it's a it. bit of a, like a, a light time. I feel like right now. So, uh, there's not a ton of new stuff coming out. So hopefully it'll stick around yeah. for a little bit. You know, you still got Top Gun out there making tons of money. So who knows? <laughs> how is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was a great movie. Great movie. That's why I guess, but, uh, That's you know, fair. and, and Jurassic is, uh, eh, it's, it's a little ways behind, but it's, it's, you know, it's at the one billion mark there, so just about at least uh, as, as of the time of this recording, it's very close. So, doing good, doing good. But so. um, you know, unfortunately, not a lot of money came from me or you for the theaters for Jurassic. So you went uh, the one time, I think, and then I only went twice. The one time. So I'm I only on like, four. Why did this movie yeah. hit a billion? Because Aaron only saw it one time. <laughs> he didn't go see it twenty times in theaters. <laughs> yeah i know i you know i uh maybe i should have used my um amc stubs to like just buy random tickets or something like that when to help out but i didn't i forgot i didn't i didn't, I didn't bother um but yeah wallet. so that's where you can find aaron for the time being you have any other spots you want to uh mention real quick before we head out no i'm not really doing much of anything that's that's really kind of it 
All right, there we go. You'll be back there here in uh, in a in a little while. I forget what our uh, what our next one is supposed to be. What what is it? What, this one's coming out in September, right? So I think the next one's gonna be November. November. So November. yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll do some. Uh, you know, because I actually had somebody. I forget where it was. Apologies, but somebody had asked if we were gonna do. I believe it was like that hundred dollar uh, gift guide thing, something like similar to that. Remember we did that a few years ago or whenever that was, where we, we had changed said, the you know, we've changed the gift guide. I feel like the gift guide usually has mm. some kind of gimmick to it. Was there a hundred dollars? Oh, yeah, that was, it was like buy, like go buy a hundred dollars of Mattel stuff in Target or Walmart stuff. right now yeah. or whatever. So yeah, so maybe we could do something like that along with whatever we can talk about because. I know, like at, that at least that, that yeah that was a that was a fun one because it, right now specifically there are so many options you know maybe back, I don't know what it was like back then but right now there's just like Target right now is I, still wall, like wall full of stuff it was spend a hundred dollars and make the an encompassing Jurassic World experience mm -hmm. that's what it was yeah so it was yeah it was specifically Mattel but it was like how do you spend a hundred dollars and then give a kid like yeah, the best the, Jurassic like everything. Like, yeah, holiday yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, not until November. It looks like November seventh. We've got the next wire coming up. Um, so far away, it feels like, but we'll be here before we know it. And um, yeah, and I wonder by that by that point, you know, this one is is a good wrap up of you know Dominion has been out for a little while. There's been some some news and stuff regarding it, and obviously the extended cut, the DVD. And obviously we talk about a lot of other stuff too, but I wonder what, what's gonna happen in the next few months. Are we gonna have anything to talk about anymore? Like, is it gonna, is, is, that, is that a good reason for doing, you know, two episodes I mean, a, a month or whatever? Look, I'm happy to be on the show in any capacity. If the wire isn't necessarily necessary, maybe we just, <laughs> figure something out for that month because i i kind of agree like we're gonna get the art book and it's gonna be a lot of art we've already seen and heard october 25th it said this is the release date we're mattel's always gonna be announcing new stuff but i just feel like i don't want the wire to become the same exact show like you know what i'm saying like where we just get on and talk about toys and yeah we, we've yeah. done that before <laughs> i know like, it's yeah Still. Yeah, that's the good thing about like spreading things out a little bit is like, you know, we could talk about some of the same things, but over two months time instead of uh, yeah. just every month. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. So anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll, we'll try not to uh, take up too much more of your time, but thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time.